Oh, so I'm standing on the porch in front of all my little seedlings, and I have some of them up here still. I have a handful in my bedroom, but I'm going to show you the stuff I've got outside. I've got some video of me kind of bringing everything out, but I didn't get video of the last little few because, honestly, it was dark out when I was bringing them out. So I'm going to kind of show you what's on my porch still and the things that I have out in the yard. So, my porch is a mess. It doubles as a potting shed. And who knows what you're going to see. So, if you want to judge, go ahead. That's your right. But it's a mess. Okay, first I'm going to start off with this hanging basket here. These are some petunias that I grew from seed. Oh, let's see. I've got another one over there. I'm just going to pinch this because it's on its way out. Okay. Those are some... It was called Dot Star Petunia. I think some people call them Galaxy Petunia. I think there's a few things they go by. Um, the next thing is... I have these plants down here. I've got some tomato seedlings. A blood orange tree. These are a few types. Um, I've got some Chesnovi that are also known as a traveler tomato. Some variegated Cherokee purple. And this one is called Splash of Cream. You can see the variegation just starting to come out. These are all potted up. I'm going to have a seedling sale in a couple of weeks. Well, not even a couple of weeks now, maybe 10 days. All right, let's go over here. This is what's on my table still. In different stages of the hardening off process. I would take you through all the varieties, but honestly, there are hundreds here, and that's not an exaggeration or hyperbole. There are literally hundreds of tomatoes here, but maybe I'll mention a few. I don't know. I don't know quite how to do this. It's been a while. Okay, these are some coleus that I've started from seed, and they are doing quite well. Um, these are some random things that I've started from seeds or that I got plugs on or I started from broken off pieces of plants or just just different things like this hyacinth bean I started it early it's not really been grown very long but it's taken off I have this black and blue salvia I over wintered from last year but I've let this top growth get out of hand and yes it's had a fan on it um, it was kind of shoved in the back of other plants, so it's a little floppy. But you can see it's got strong growth from the bottom. I'm just going to cut it back and use this to start little another little plant. Real life of trying to shoot a video. I had to just run in and answer the phone. Let's see if I can figure out where I stopped. Oh yes, I think I was on the sage. This is a purple ruffles basil. And I bought it because it has this beautiful 
plant with the variegated leaves. I did get this one at a nursery and it's flowering on me. Really pretty purple flower that I'm going to pinch off. Go ahead and pinch the middle off of that too because whenever basil starts to flower it changes flavor so not only are we encouraging it to not change flavor but we're encouraging branches and whenever you every time you pinch a basil you'll get these branches like this one already has been pinched you'll get these branches and if you're going to pinch it before it flowers you need to get all the little tops which is going to send out more tops but it'll try to flower in see like this one right here I don't know if you can see this but there's one it's got a flower forming in it this one right here it has a flower forming in it okay this right here is a flat of failure <laughs> we're going to call you a flat of failure this is stuff that just did not germinate and I put it out here because I know sometimes seeds can be sleepy and maybe with this warm, sunny, rainy weather it could possibly, you know, some of those seeds could pick up. These are some basils that I have that honestly have been struggling because they had aphids and though they're cured of aphids now. They're like having to make up steam, so I just went ahead and planted another bunch of those. And those ones will either make it or I'll end up composting them. All these little seedlings are for a seedling sale. I'm going to do it probably, I would guess, in about 10 to 12 days. Um, these ones right here are Ted's Pink Current. These are tomatoes that are my personal tomatoes. And they're still, I grew them all from seed. They're still in these little plug trays. There's hundreds of variety, like that's a Brad's Atomic Grape. Um, that's a dark, that says Dark Galaxy. This one right here with the pretty ferny leaves, that's called Silver Fern Tree. Let's see. This one says Chadwick Cherry, this one right here. On my tomatoes, pretty much as many cells as I have. That's how many tomato varieties there are when it comes to my personal ones right here. When it comes to my seedling cell ones, they're just in individual pots. But there's another tray of tomatoes and there's another tray of tomatoes. Let's just look at a quick couple. Uh-oh. Um... This one says, Sweet Million. This one is, <laughs> I've got some over here that have a question mark on a tag, and those are volunteers that were volunteering in my compost. So I just popped them out and put them in a cell, and we'll see what grows. Um, what else, kind of, let's see. There's another Brad's Atomic Grape, a Big Rainbow, a White Cherry, Atomic Sunset. I think that's what it says I'm looking at these tags down in there um, this right here is just a pack of uh, Victoria blue salvia sage that I bought I bought some regular thyme because my thyme did not germinate and I've got lemon thyme already there's a few peppers down in here. We have peppers such as Fresno Chili. Let's see. This one's called Nova. I don't know how to pronounce it. Got a full Jew, not a Pino. Or full Jew jalapeno, another full Jew jalapeno. The not a Pino is another type of heatless jalapeno. The full Jew jalapeno is also supposed to be heatless. Got some rosemary I bought. <laughs> More peppers. Some alacosia. I will be planting these outside. However, I will bring them inside in the winter because they're sold as a house plant. 
they're tropical, they cannot be grown here. Um, more coleus, more basil, more tomato, um, sell tomatoes. These are all unusual varieties. None of these are just your average because we have people all around here that sell the average ones. But like, for instance, this one's called Turn. Wooly Blue Jay. Can you see that? It's got these velvety fuzzy leaves and they're kind of a blue a bluish tint because it has the anthocyanin in it and it gets blue fruit so I will pop a picture of the fruit up here if I can find one but that's what I mean I'm doing I want to say like kind of trendy varieties or unusual varieties but not like common varieties tomato varieties I'm doing it's like things that you've heard on YouTube like I'm doing a few Dr. Weish's I'm doing the um, I'm doing the black strawberry you know I'm gonna advertise it as seen on the cover of the Breaker Creek Whole Seed catalog I'm doing the like um, I'm doing variegated Cherokee purple I'm doing splash of cream I'm trying to do varieties that are either unusual so people will see them plant people will see them and be like oh that's so cool I don't have the chance to buy those around here or it's stuff that they've heard on YouTube that maybe our local nurseries don't watch new YouTube or they they don't understand plant trends I guess would be a good way to put it and maybe I can get some of those things out there to people who might not have a chance to try them otherwise. That's the hopes anyway. Um, I think that I'm going to show you a few more plants. And then I'm going to do like a little mini farm tour. I want to show you how much my broccoli has grown and how much my lettuce has grown since I did that other little mini farm tour. There's still not much going on. There's a couple place we, places we didn't look at last time, so I'm hoping to put that in here, and I guess we'll just get started with that. Okay, more coleuses. I had intended on putting coleus in my plant cell, but I did not get them potted up in time, so I lost a bit, and I wanted to pot them individually, not in four packs, and I don't think I have enough four packs to make it worth selling four packs. And I don't know if I have the wherewithal after potting up these tomatoes to go ahead and pot them up individually after getting them in these four packs. So I might just keep them all for myself. Maybe try again next year. Okay, these are more of my peppers and some micro dwarf tomatoes. These all really just need potted up or put in the ground. I'm going to wait a few days. I think we've already had our last frost. These are some herbs and randomness, some peppers that I've grown from seed. Um, that's some sage. There's a white sage. Okay, hold on. This is a sage. There's a white sage. St. John's wort. Ooh, maybe my time did... Nope, that's the St. John's wort. Okay, St. John's wort. Nothing came up in that. This right here also has... This one's got the white sage here. There's two of those and some African sage. This is parsley, if I'm not mistaken. No, yes, Italian parsley. It needs watered, even though it's rained and I've watered over here. Um, and, oh, some struggling lime basil. They're starting to take off. Here's some dahlias I started from seed. And I want to show you this. This is a way I will start a lot of my stuff. And then I'll pop it about out of here and pot it up. I just haven't had time to do that with these, nor did I have the room. So I just decided to leave them in there until I'm ready to plant them out. Okay, let me go. I want to show you. Here's that petunia I grew from seed that I said I had another one. Just look how beautiful those are. See how they're more open? Also, look at my tendril peas, how much they're growing. Okay. And, this, and this broccoli, look how big it's getting. It's sprouting broccoli, and there are several sprouts coming up. Let's see if I can get in here. 
There's one in the middle. And then you get down in here. And there are more sprouts. I'm not going to lie with this broccoli and cabbage. I planted them out too early and I've had a lot of death because of it. Had a lot of survivors. Um, I've just been popping stuff out and replanting it. Okay, this was already in here. Let me show this. The switch chart is getting big. These right here are the little status plants that I planted out and sprinkled in here. I also put some alyssum, but some of it died because I did not get it watered in in time. And then, as you can see, some of it's still living. Some more chard. I did stick in a few more seeds around here because I want a few more, but there's some of the... Um, I wanted some more chard. I stuck in some more seeds over with that one too. That right there is my status, and I've got some sweet peas there. But yeah, I'm just amazed at how well that broccoli's doing. I kind of wanted to show it because it's had significant growth. I'll pop in a picture That's here. And also, I wanted to show you my little lettuce bed. They're getting so pretty, and I'm going to start picking this soon. There's three different types. This is the Tom Thumb lettuce. This is some kind of bronze lettuce. I will put it in. And this is the Lolo Rosso, I think. I sprinkled in some more status. Nothing's really going in this, on in this bed except for weeds. Um, I do have this peony getting ready to bloom, which is exciting. I've never seen it bloom. I've had it for years. And I've never seen it bloom. My rose is coming back healthy. See, the only other thing in bloom is I've got all these pink forget-me-nots. Basically, we're in the time of season for me where I'm just waiting for things to start blooming. I'm going to take you up and kind of give you a quick overview of the top field and then go show you how the onions are doing. We're probably not going to be doing too much with this area this year, but we will be heading this way. So, I went, spent last year digging this irrigation, and as you can see, it's still a problem. Basically because it's filled up with silt and rock, and I knew that was going to happen. But it fixed the problem temporarily, and on down that way it still flows. It's just this area here. As you can see, it's just filled in so much. So, we have a few plans. We have that pile there, that's where we had our compost bin, but the wind blew it away because we didn't have it weighted. This area right here, where it runs down from the hillside, and it kind of pulls here, right here in this area, and creates a little pond. I think that's what we're going to do, is we're going to turn it into a dry pond. And then, it flows this way anyways, it kind of snakes in this area before meeting in the middle and flowing down so what we're going to do is do our dry pond hopefully and direct it all in one stream down where it naturally wants to go anyways and you can kind of see where it's wearing its divot out right here and then it goes down there and down our driveway but this spring I planted some lentils up here and we've slowly been putting like sawdust, um, peanut shell, there's also straw. We're just layering it up with organic material and we're kind of not planting anything up here at all this year. We're just letting these lentils grow. We're going to fix some irrigation. And we're going to till all this under or chop it and drop it and put more, more wood chips down. But they're coming up all over the place. They're sprouting everywhere. Leaves from last fall. I have got some grapes that we've planted. I don't know if those two, I've got these two Concord here. I don't know if they're going to come up. 
This is that ring. I spray painted it black. And I've got two grapes there. And I've got this climbing rose. And honestly, I forget what it's called. But I will figure it out and I will put it in there. It's doing well. And I have this grape, which I also don't remember the name of. But it's getting growth on it. I don't know if you can see that. But eventually, I got another climbing rose I'm going to put on this end. But eventually, this round structure will be covered in climbing things. I'm sorry if this is mowing, you can't hear me, but I'm doing my best, guys. That takes us to this field. There are so many things going on in here. Let me just have a seat for a second. This field causes me great anxiety because it is so full of weeds. There are also perennials. There are bushes. The field behind me, I have replanted hundreds of glads. They're starting to come back and eventually it'll be real pretty, but for now it's like I can't mow my grass until they come up and I can mulch around them. I started mulching around them last year and never got it finished. Honestly, this field, this field is kind of sometimes makes me want to quit because there's so much to do and I feel like I started it too soon. I should have went a little more slowly, but I have this habit of seeing things in my head and wanting it right now. And I also fall into the trap of comparing myself to others. For instance, I watch these YouTubers and they're talking about their plants and their beautiful gardens. And I'm like, wow, over the next few years, we'll really get to watch this place come together. And it's going to be this exciting journey. And I'm going to be so inspired. And then like, then I go to turn on the next episode and the project's done. The whole project. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I come out here and I look at my patch of ground and it's going to take years to rebuild the topsoil that's stripped off. It's going to take years to combat all the wild raspberry and all the dewberry and all the wild blackberry. It's going to take years to combat all the things that we have both created and all the things that are just part that we're you know just part of the land already and it's easy to get discouraged but then I also come out here and I sit and I stare at these blueberry bushes right now and despite my best effort to make their life hard they're growing I have this these beautiful little bushes that are coming back I have my herb patches that are coming back and it's just I feel this this necessity to to have it all. Just something that's really helped me turn the light back on is sometimes you just have to lay it down. If you can't do it all, that's fine. If you can't have it all, that's fine. Right now, I know that there are no way that I'm going to get all those plants I just showed you in the ground and keep all of this weeded and get all of it mulched because I have to carry it all by hand. I don't have any machinery. I don't have any side-by-sides or any I have a wheelbarrow and five gallon buckets and a shovel and, and it's just me most of the time. So therefore, I know that I can't get this all done right now and that has to be okay and it just has to be okay because I can only do what I can do and something's going to give and I might as well just be okay and accept that and roll with the punches instead of comparing myself to others or focusing on, a, on what I don't have or what I can't do. I need to focus on what I can do, even if it's only plant one hole, or even if it's only dig one hole. If all I can do is dig one hole and put that one plant in the ground, I have accomplished something, and I can't expect more of myself. My brain once flooded with all these words and all these expressions and all these deep meanings becomes vacant and searching and confused. I'm just trying to share an experience, and I hope you can hear me over this weed eater. I feel like sometimes, sometimes I don't convey what I mean to convey on here. 
And that really saddens me because I, ha I do have a lot to express. I do have experience. I do have reasons why I do things. And maybe I think of things in a bit of a different way. So it might give someone an idea or I can, you know, go through the process with you. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying. I'm just a person out here trying to make a connection with other people whose eyes don't glaze over whenever I talk about plants or soil or land or microbes or mulch or trees. And it's really hard sometimes because I do, I am a little bit of a, a recluse and I don't get out much. Okay, let's get back to this garden tour. All right, we're back talking about this hillside. The one that's grown over, but I do have some stuff coming back. I've got some perennial scabiosa here. This area, it's hard to tell what could come back. I don't know if I showed this, but I have this mini rose coming back. These are the plants that I got last year on clearance. This is a nine bark. I think I paid a couple dollars for it. I'm not sure of the variety, but I still have the tag, so I will pop it on screen. Moving down this way. I know it's hard to tell amongst the weeds. But this is a type of honeysuckle. It's Davarilla Fiery Night Glow. I will try to pop pictures of these bushes and such on the screen. Then I have this Neon Flash Spirea. It's coming back. This is a salvia. I think that that one might be the black and blue salvia. And it's rated for a zone 7. And I wasn't sure if it was going to come back. That is why I took a piece in. I wanted to make sure. I got them for a dollar on clearance. But it looks like it's coming back. It was rated for a zone 7. A zone seven. I knew there was a chance it would come back. This little bed here is actually going to be really pretty once I get it weeded. I've got some more salvias. I'm not sure of the varieties. There's one. Um, there's one. There's one. And then I've got some pucaras that are, that one's doing well. That one's struggling. Oh, it's putting on some new growth. And here I've taken pretty much everything out I'm going to search for volunteers and move them because you remember I had these beds last year I was not happy with them like for instance I've got some bleeding hearts coming up that I will move I'm going to leave these roses here there's a rose coming up there and a rose coming up here and then another mini rose also have gladiolas planted in that area. And I've got a few things volunteering over here from where I planted it. Basically, nothing here is staying except for those roses. I'm gonna work around them. This, okay, this right here is that area that I filled with wildflower seed where I had my poor man's silage tarp. Let me show you what that is. And, conjunction to where we're standing. We just came from that direction. I have potatoes planted in this area. All of this needs weeded. Stuff has sprouted since, since I planted. And all along, all along this area, in this pathway, in this pathway, and going around, let's see, coming where that is, coming around this way some, over into this area, I have it planted up with glads. Eventually it'll be a pathway. Right now it looks like nothing. And therein lies my problem because those glads are starting to sprout. But I also need to mow or weed eat and I really can't until they come up. See, let me show you an example. 
Oh, nope. Yeah, those are glads. That's coming up. I'm going to have these all over the place. But I also need to weed eat. Okay, now we're going to go down to this bottom field where I planted my onions. Basically, I'm leaving all the walking in. So you can kind of get an idea of the way the land's laid out. I don't have a way to get an aerial photo. But anyways, we're going down to this bottom field. And These blueberry bushes. You know what? I didn't show you my other blueberry bushes. Look at all these astilbies coming back. There's tons of them. And my little ladies' mantles coming back too that I planted last fall. And hosta. All my seed potato or potatoes from seed that I planted in this area have died. Because I put them out too soon. Okay, this bottom field where all my onions are I'm about to show you. I'm also going to lay down some time release fertilizer and I have this Dr. Earth organic for vegetables, herbs, and tomatoes. Now I've never used it before. I usually make, I usually use a compost tea I made, but since we are in the rainy season, it's just easier to put down something that's time release and then start up with the compost tea when it gets a little drier out. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't know how well that works, but let me show you these onions real quick. They've grown a pretty good amount. Maybe I'll pop maybe I'll pop a before picture in here so you can kind of see how small they were. All right. I have rows there, rows there, and rows there. Um, let's see if you can see they're putting on size. I'm going to go through soon and weed, mulch, and top them. I have a mixture of long day and intermediate day onions in here. And let's just show you real quick and then I'll fertilize. There's a few hundred in here. This is what I'm saying. They make, it makes me so distraught because I weeded all this and you can see what happens. Alright, here's a few more. And then all this in here is garlic that either dropped seed or just we didn't get dug up from last year. Okay guys, I know this was kind of a boring tour. But it's just that time of year where there's not much going on except for a lot of green growth. Violets. There's violets in bloom everywhere. Basically the point of this is, though it doesn't look like it because it's bright and sunny, it's the wet season, and everything's growing like crazy, and I can't keep up with it. But I'm just going to learn to be okay with that. I know this wasn't much to see. Hopefully it gets more beautiful and more taken care of, and we have more things to look at, and there's more beautiful things in bloom. But if not, I'm going to be okay with that too. And maybe I'll take you along the way and just show you my mess and show you that it's not always beautiful. Who knows how that'll pan out. And we'll just see how it develops. It'll be an adventure we can go on together. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time.